This is an S-Video cable. Actually, it's not. It's a composite cable that's masquerading as an S-Video cable. This, for some reason, became all the rage to do in the late 90s to early 2000s when making cables for game consoles. You see, rather than build an actual S-Video connection from the console to the TV, the cable manufacturers decided to just piggyback off the composite signal and route it through an S-Video cable into your TV, introducing all sorts of fun artifacts. This kept manufacturing costs down and also gave cable manufacturers a little bonus being able to say, hey, this cable also has an S-Video cable at the end of it, even though all it's doing is piggybacking off of the composite signal and introducing tons of artifacts. Because of this, it has become so difficult to find a good quality S-Video cable nowadays. Hell, it was hard to find in the 90s and it's even harder to find now. Take this cable for the Sega Dreamcast, for instance. This is a Retrobit cable, a nice name brand in the retro gaming sphere, and their cables too have this S-Video composite problem. So let's take a look at that. Here are some examples of the artifacts that you will see if you have one of these weird janky cables. First up is what's called checkerboarding. If you look at this image here, this is the Sega logo, you'll see this with any sort of large blob of color. You'll see this weird checkerboarding pattern over the image. You can see it's like this saturation luma change. If you actually compare to a good quality S-Video cable here below, I'm using the performance cable. See the Sega logo appears nice, crisp, and clear. None of that checkerboarding effect, none of that weird distortion that's going on. None of that, just a good, clean image. To go with this, the other artifact that you'll see a lot on poor S-Video cables is dot crawl. As you can see with the life bar here in PSO, you see this weird fuzziness around the edge. It's almost like the pixels are moving around and just vibrating. This is dot crawl. You'll see this a lot with life bars. As you can see, here's the performance cable in the Dreamcast showing a nice, clean image once again. So yeah, I'm sorry if I just ruined your S-Video cables, but I also hope to enlighten some people out there that have not given S-Video a fair chance because they have used one of these cables and went, wow, that's too sharp or something. I've heard that before. People said that S-Video is too sharp and it creates artifacts because of how sharp it's trying to be. No, that's the cable. That's the cable that's bad. And if you know any good S-Video cables, leave them in the comments. Like I said, the best S-Video cable for the Dreamcast is the Performance one because Sega never brought over the real one to the US, but Performance, which was a good third-party manufacturer for the Sega Dreamcast, uh, they made a good S-Video cable. So that's the one you want. So leave some good S-Video cables in the comments and I'll see you later.